Sunday to you, viewers, and welcome to the first Sunday in the month of December. Today is Harvest Sunday, the beginning of the Christian calendar. So I think it is also right for me to say Happy Christian Year. Today, I want us to look at Romans chapter 13, from verse 8 to 14. And I've themed my message, Casting Away the Works of Darkness. Verse 8 says, Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. One of the things you will see in this passage is the fact that the fulfillment of the law is to show love to others. Because in that passage, if you read further, it says when you take all the commandments, that shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. They are summed up in this one thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what verse 9 tells us. It says, I just want to ask you this day, do you love your neighbor, the people around you, that person that is your co-worker is not there by chance. God has placed him or her there for you to radiate the love of Christ. I'm not talking about lust. I'm talking about the genuine love of God, agape love, to such a person. The people who live in your surroundings, can they see Christ in you? One thing is certain. Jesus Christ is coming back. That is the whole reason why we celebrate Advent. We are celebrating the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Why we do not know when he's coming back. We are certain he's coming back. It may be just the next minute. And it may not happen for another thousand years. That is beyond us. It's beyond us to begin to speculate when exactly. But we are to be ready for that event that will surely come. And the question is, are you ready? One of the ways by which you become ready is to cast away the works of darkness. One of it is to show love. Because when you refuse to show love, you are in darkness. You are not radiating the love of God to others. You can't say, I love God and hate your neighbors. I want you to reflect on your life, how you live your life. Thank God you witnessed another advent. Is your life radiating the love of God? Do you show love to your neighbor? Can people see the way you live your life and say, certainly, this is a child of God. If you go to verse 10, it says, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. But if you say, I will show that person, I will do it for him, I will do it for her, they will see, he will know. Friend, there's no love in you. Are you prepared to let go and let God be the one to fight your battles for you and for you to radiate love out to the others. It's a pity that we live in a world where love is scarce. Despite the word of God, despite the number of Christians all over the place, even in the house of God, love is scarce. If a brethren joins us today in a fellowship and God so blesses the brethren, some of us will begin to hem in that when he or she comes that is already doing this, we have been here for long. Why don't you appreciate that brother or sister for what God is doing in their life so that God can also do the same in your life? I want to encourage you to re-examine yourself. Are you the kind of person who likes strife, backbiting, bitterness, and all those things? Those do not reflect the love of God. We win by showing love. Are you ready to accept to be cheated for the sake of Christ so that people can see the love of God in you? 
so they can say, oh, certainly this is a child of God. Can we see Christ in you? We see Christ in you when you begin to radiate love in everything. If you go to verse 11, he says, and do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to take, to wake up from your slumber because the salvation is nearer now than when we first begin. It's a wake-up call. Advent is a wake-up call for us to remind ourselves that Jesus is coming. To wake up from our slumber, from all the kind of life we are living that does not glorify the name of the Lord. That is what we do when we say we cast off the works of darkness. What are the works of darkness in your life that you are going to cast off in this season? Even as you listen to me this morning, are you already planning to get even with somebody? Would you be willing to let go and let God? Because you had me this morning, are you willing to let go and let God? Don't take it for granted that you had me. God wanted you to hear this. That's why you, you, you stumbled across this. Are you willing to let go and let go? Who is that person that is hurting you? That you are looking for the opportunity to get evil? The Bible says you should cast away all works of darkness. Let God fight your battle. Verse 12 says, the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Friends, there are many deeds of darkness that we have gotten so used to and we play with it and we say it is okay. One of it is living in lust. It's so rampant, even in the body of Christ. May the Lord help us. You need to check yourself. The Bible says we should examine ourselves to see whether we are still in the faith as lost. It's not only lost for women or men. It could be lost for money. It could be lost for position. It could be greed in its various form. What are the things that you are lost in about that is not for a child of God? This is the time to strongly re-examine yourself and go to God and repent and ask for his mercy. And as you ask for his mercy, God will graciously forgive you. If you turn to him genuinely, he's ready to wipe away your sins so that you can begin a new life. Verse 14 says, and verse 13 says, let us behave decently as in daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Friends, be careful with jealousy. Jealousy is very dangerous and it creeps in. You see others that God has blessed. And you don't know when jealousy becomes bitterness. You actually, is almost on the same level as murder when you begin to jealous somebody. You need to totally re-examine yourself and begin to list the things that you need to pray about and ask for God's forgiveness in your life. This message is a wake-up call to all of us, myself inclusive, to re-examine myself when I'm still in the faith because Jesus is coming. And he will start, one, one of the realities is that Jesus will come. He's coming. When he comes, what is he going to find in your hand? What is he going to find in my life? He closes that chapter in verse 40. He says, rather, that is, instead of those works of darkness, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't, don't think of how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Your thought process matters. What are the things you are thinking about? Your thought process matters. And let me add, what you listen to also matters. What are the music you are listening to? Even some so-called Christian songs are dangerous. Brothers, sisters in Christ, it's time for us to examine ourselves, examine our life, examine our environment. Do all these things glorify God? Are you living in a toxic environment? You need to pull yourself out. You need to separate yourself. You need to turn to Christ. You need to let him have his way in your life totally. 
I pray that the Lord will give you the strength to say no to all forms of ungodliness. The strength to turn to Him. The strength to do His will and His will alone. Would you be able to say like Paul, I have been crucified with Christ Jesus. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. If Christ shows up to you, you should be proud to say, Welcome my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and see, not for you to go and hide. I pray for the strength for you to say no to all forms of ungodliness. To begin to walk rightly, even from this day forward. God bless you as you do this. And once again, happy new Christian year. In Jesus' name. Amen. <music>